Preparation for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. Taxi! Hello? Ah! Ah! I said don't come near me. No, Minette, don't! <gasps> Stay back, you hear me? Stay back! Bonjour. Vous êtes... I mean, are you Nancy? Uh, yeah? I'm Heather McKay. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. How was your flight? Uh, fine. Well, actually, they lost my suitcase, so I don't have any clothes or my cell phone. What's going on in there? Is someone hurt? That's just Minette throwing one of her tantrums. Don't worry. She'll stop screaming right now. <laughs> they lost your suitcase? That's terrible. Well, at least you're staying with Jing Jing. She'll have tons of clothes you can borrow. Is she all right? Oh, you mean Minette? Don't worry, she's fine. At least she will be after phase three, which should begin right about now. See, she uses this process that some shrink taught her to manage anger and frustration. First, she vents her rage for 10 seconds, then six seconds of sobs and tears, and finally, at least four seconds of robust laughter, all of which restores her positive flux. Huh? It's all very weird, but it works, and believe me, without it, she would be impossible to work for. With it, she's a mere nightmare to work for. Anyway... Ready to get started? That depends. On what? On how closely I'm going to have to be working with Manette. <laughs> Kidding. That desk over there will be your workstation. I made a list of all the things that need to get done and put them on your computer. That's a Metro Pass. It'll let you ride the subway all over the city for free. Go ahead and take it. Answering the phone is your job. If you have any questions, just ask. Ask me, that is. Do not bother Manette. She's behind on her spring collection and is in danger of falling way behind on her couture projects. Couture projects? High fashion dresses and accessories that people have commissioned Manette to create. Needless to say, those people are très riche. In fact, she's designing the dress the First Lady will wear to the World Summit in November. Pretty cool, huh? Heather? Yes? I hear voices. Who are you talking to out there? Nancy Drew. You know, from the States? Well, she's no good to me out there. Send her in. Yes, Manette. As soon as you feel up to it, she's right through that door. How come Manette has fallen so far behind in her work? She's been under a lot of stress lately. Thanks for your help. Allez, bye-bye. You better go in there and meet Manette before you talk to me anymore. Can't put it off forever, you know.
Leave that alone, okay? Sunny was here. Pick up envelope from JJ Ling. Pick up fabric photos from Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Deliver photos to John Mitchell Truckenard. Fix plotter. <laughs> do whatever Manette tells you to do and do it fast.
Bonjour. No, Nancy. George, go get on the other line, quick. It's Nancy. And remember, talk fast. She's calling all the way from France. So where are you? What have you seen? How do you like Paris? What's Minette like? Have you learned how to design clothes? Beth, slow down. You don't have to talk fast, okay? My dad bought me a phone card and told me to make as many calls as I want. Oh, great. Hi, Nance. What's going on? How's Paris? Have you seen the Louvre? What about the Eiffel Tower? How many famous people George, have you George, three words. Prepaid phone card. Oh, great. Hey, perfect timing. We were just about to go for a run. Whoa, wait a minute. A run? Jog. I meant jog. But you said run. I meant jog. You know how I feel about the R word, George. Jog. We're going for a jog, Bess. Honest. So, Nance, tell us about Jing Jing Ling. I can't. I haven't met her yet. Then tell us about Minette. I can't do that either. See, the airline lost my cell phone. I'm calling from her office. So what can you talk about? Guess I should get back to work. Call us anytime, preferably soon. Hey, Joe, it's Nancy. Nancy? As in Drew? I thought you were in France. I am in France. Frank, pick up the phone down there. It's Nancy Drew calling from France. Everything okay? Everything's great. <sighs> hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. Whoa, you sound out of breath. Not out of breath, out of shape. Me? Hey, you're the one who's been taking a break for the last two hours. Break from what? Carrying furniture upstairs. Carpet layers are coming to redo the basement tomorrow, so we gotta get everything out. And I use the term we loosely. Hey, I'm pacing myself here. You're in the kitchen eating jelly donuts, aren't you? Not anymore. Well, I made it to Paris, okay? Great. Exactly where in Paris are you? In the old windmill that houses Minette's office and studio. It's in the section of Paris called Montmartre. The outer office looks like any other modern office. I haven't been inside Minette's studio yet, but it's inside the Moulin itself, so it's probably very old and funky looking. Have you met Minette? No, I'm still working up the courage. Courage? The woman designs dresses. What do you need courage for? How many women do you know who go around wearing masks, Joe? Oh, yeah. I guess that does move her up there on the scariometer, doesn't it? Au revoir. Keep in touch. Bye, Nancy. These doodles sure look familiar. Sonny. Sonny June did them. He must have been Minette's last assistant. Wow, that guy gets around.
What's this? That's the plotter. It's broken. Fixing it is one of your jobs.
wonder what's under here. That's a project I'm working on. Well, supposed to be working on. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there you are. I was just about to call Amy Grunhild and tell her that this internship thing she'd arranged for you was off. It's bad enough Amy foisting you on me like this. The day I become financially independent and can tell people like her to buzz off will be the happiest day of my life. Well, you're here, we've met, so get to work. Heather did give you a list of chores, right? Could I ask you a couple of questions first? No. One more thing. See that form over there? The one I've just started to drape? Don't touch it. Don't even go near it. That's the dress I'm designing for the First Lady. Now go. Actually, make me a pot of my special tea first. It was custom blended by my tea therapist, so make sure you follow the directions. When you're done, pour me a cup and leave it on the table. A nice big boost of herbal energy never fails to get my brain cells firing. I want that tea, Nancy. Manette, you've really outdone yourself.
Let's see. To make Minette her tea, the first thing I should do is read these instructions. Then I should put whichever herbs the instructions say I need into this pot of boiling water. Then when I'm done, I should click on the teapot so I can pour the tea into a cup. If I make a mistake and need to throw out an herb that I chose or the tea itself, all I have to do is click on the sink. Okay, I think I'm ready. If Minette has had a temper tantrum in the last 14 days, and if she declares that blue is her favorite color on the day... Excuse me, Minette, but what's your favorite color? Red. When asked to pick a number between 1 and 10, if Manette chooses an odd number on the day the tea is to be consumed... Manette, could you please pick a number between 1 and 10? 10.
That should do it. I finished making your tea. Just leave it there. I'm through making tea, hopefully for good. Interesting material. You're not touching that, are you? I was just looking. <laughs> what kind of material is this? It's a brand new blend. Doesn't even have a name yet. Don't you have work to do? Just curious. Not now, I'm busy. That's horrible. Heather, you tell Nancy that she made my tea wrong and that unless she wants to be on the first plane back to the States, she'd better get back in here and make it right. You heard her. There's something on the floor here. Looks like someone slipped it under the door. It's for Manette. Go ahead and open it. Make the most of what little time you have left. Soon it will all be over. Oh no, not another one. Manette's gotten other letters like this? Letters, phone calls. They started sometime in April, then they stopped, then they started up again in July. And last month, someone sent Manette dead flowers every day for a week. She locks the letters up in her dodo box over there in order to neutralize them. May I keep this letter? Why? I mean, if you were some kind of private detective, I'd say sure, but since you're not, just put it in the dodo box. But I, 
I mean, uh, uh, okay. How do you open this thing? You don't. There's a lock on it, but Manette is convinced that if she opens it, all the wickedness in there will escape and wreak havoc. In fact, don't say anything to her about that letter. It'll just upset her, and if she falls any further behind, she'll have to cancel her show next month. And if that happens, she may as well cancel her career. Has this windmill or moulin always been a fashion design studio? No. In fact, until a year or two ago, this little old lady lived here. When she passed away, this place went on the market and Minette snapped it up. See, Minette has this thing about curves. She claimed working in a quasi-round environment like this would make her more productive. It makes her seem very eccentric. Seem eccentric? The woman wears a mask. She is eccentric. And fashion editors eat it up. In fact, if there's one thing I've learned from Manette, it's that how a designer behaves is likely to get her just as much attention in the fashion world as what she designs. Why does Manette wear that mask? All I know is that back in March, on the last day of her big fall show, she showed up wearing that mask and she hasn't taken it off since. And she's never bothered to explain why? Sometimes she refuses to say. Other times she says it's because some mysterious man in black threw acid on her. I think it's because she just likes to get people's tongues wagging. Who is Dieter von Schwesterkronk? He's this awesome fashion photographer. But listen, as it turns out, I have to run an errand in that area, so I'll pick up those fabric photos. Oh no, that's okay. I'll do it. Finding his studio will help me get more familiar with Paris. In fact, why don't I run your errand, too? No, that's all right. It, uh, it can wait. Getting those prints to jean Me is much more important. Why am I delivering photos to somebody in a cafe? Jean-Michel Trequenard is the fashion editor for Glam Glam magazine. All he really is is a glorified gossip columnist, so it pays to be nice to him. Which, as you'll find out, ain't easy. His office is the Café Kiki on the Rue des Mauvais Garçons in the Marais. Look for the bald guy at the corner table. He'll have a cell phone in one hand and a fork in the other. Thanks for your help. Have fun! I want that tea, Nancy. Hugo Butterly, eat your heart out.
There. Your tea's done. It'd better be right this time. Rude. Rude. Ew, yuck. Uh-oh. Guess what you get to do over. Forget something? Thanks for your help. Whenever you have questions, just ask. There. Your tea's done. It's about time. Hugo Butterly, eat your heart out. You made the tea wrong again. She's waiting. to your wall. You're not really talking to me while I'm trying to work, are you? <laughs> Sorry. Minette, you've really outdone yourself.
All done. I'm leaving your tea on the table. All right. Minette, you've really outdone yourself. Nancy, come back here. The tea is utterly rude. I can already feel my creativity flowing again, building like a wave on the ocean, surging towards some unseen shore. I have another job for you, a very critical job. See the stuff that I've been studying? That, in essence, is my spring collection. Uh-huh. All those objects have certain things in common which speak to and stimulate the artistic sinews of my subconscious, from which all the designs I need will eventually burst forth. Uh-huh. They're all totally rude, but they're not enough. I need more, Nancy. You need to take the number 7 metro to Pont Neuf, go to the flea market in Square de Vergalant Park, and buy me four more things with qualities identical to the ones each of these possesses. Use this bag. Put everything in there as soon as you buy it. I don't want anyone seeing what you bring me. It could give away my whole collection. Here's some money. But I'm not sure what you want. Stuff. I want... stuff. New stuff that's just like this old stuff, only... different. Now just take a good look at my stuff, then go. Go! Forget something? What's with all the red paint that splattered on the wall in Minette's studio? I came in one morning last month and there it was. Minette must have had a bad night. You didn't ask her about it? Minette always throws things when she's upset. Remember what happened when you first arrived? Oh yeah, the potted plant. I get your point. Thanks for your help. Allez, bye bye. Let me guess. You lost your passport, so you're looking for the American consulate to get it replaced. Only you wound up here because you asked a Parisian for directions, and you thought you understood what he said. Only you did it. Am I right? Actually, I'm looking for Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Dieter von Schwesterkrank. Please don't tell me you're a would-be model who thinks her career would take off if only I would photograph her. No, my name's Nancy Drew. Minette sent me here to pick up some fabric photos. Ah, I regret to say I have not printed them up yet, nor will I have time to do so for quite a while. Had I used my digital cameras, there would be no problem, but unfortunately the essence of those fabrics was better captured by film. to deliver them to that fashion editor, Jean-Michel Traquenard, today. My regrets once again. Do you know how to make prints? Uh, no. Then you will learn. There is a binder on the bookshelf that will tell you how to make prints with the paper I use, which is Krollmeister Eskachrom PB paper. 
The dark room is through the door with the red light by it, and the four negatives from which prints need to be made are next to the enlarger. I'm sure you'll do fine. Ah, you're done making those prints? I have a question. Not about making prints, I hope. It's about something else. What? What's your opinion of Minette's assistant, Heather McKay? Heather's a bright girl. Her crush on me is unfortunate, but I can handle it. She has a crush on you? It's obvious to me that she does. Dealing with models the way I do day in and day out, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what women are thinking and feeling. Do a lot of women have crushes on you? Oh, yes. You see, models do their best work in front of photographers they feel they can trust. So to thrive professionally, I've worked hard to develop an aura of compassion and trustworthiness. Unfortunately, all women recognize and respond to it, regardless of the fact that I will never return their affections, Heather included. I think I'll go to work on those prints now. What's this? That's just a toy I made when I was a boy. Go ahead and play with it if you want. I still do. Nice camera. Is it digital? Yes. Very high res, though. Very limited capacity. Would you like to borrow it? I'd love to. Thank you. You're welcome. Larger negatives, developer, stop bath, fixer. May I take this binder into the dark room with me? Leave it in here, please. If you take it in there, you might spill something on it.
Just make sure you don't knock over anything in there. Some of those chemicals are extremely volatile. Help yourself! Look at all those bottles of chemicals. One false move and boom. Oh my gosh, it's pitch black in here. With all those chemicals around, I'm going to have to be real careful. Chemical plus another chemical equals... I broke my timer, so you'll have to count to yourself. You know, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Oops.
There, I'll just put them in an envelope and I'll be all set. Ah, you made the prints. Now you get to have the pleasure of delivering them to Monsieur Traconard. What's he going to do with them, do you know? Heather said that he wants to use them to illustrate an upcoming story about modern fabrics. Does jean may dislike you as much as you seem to dislike him? It wouldn't surprise me. I refuse to bow and scrape when I'm in his presence and he resents me for it. He's not used to that. You see, most people are so afraid he'll write something bad about them that as far as they're concerned, whatever jean me wants, jean me gets, no questions asked. Thanks for your help. Of citizen. To the memory of the French fighters. Lequel préférez-vous? Parlez-vous anglais? If you buy, I speak whatever you like. I see you over there at the monument with the Cross of Lorraine. You are a tourist? Actually, I have a job here in Paris, but it's only temporary, so I guess I'm kind of a tourist. Tourists are good. I welcome tourists. I am Malika. I sell fine things from around the world. The others who sell here, they sell things which they pry from the muck of their basements. You'll see something you like? Well... You're selling a wheel from a kitty car? With imagination, that wheel can be put to many uses. Which is why the price is 35 euros. I'll give you 26 euros for it. Voila! What else do you like? How much are you selling the green rings for? They are green magic rings. They cost 15 euros. Would 8 euros be okay? Voila! What else do you like? Anything special about this stuffed animal? It is a very nice shade of blue, and it is only 10 euros. It's not that nice a shade. I'll pay one euro. For a child who loves soft, squishy blue things, it is a wonderful toy. Ten euros so no sale. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? How much are you selling this for? Put some flowers around the bottom and voila, you have a centerpiece. And I ask only 8 euros. I think it's worth more like 2 euros. This crystal pyramid you can find nowhere else. 8 euros, that is my price. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? Where did this come from? Ah, that is Fifi. 
I receive Fifi on my sixth birthday from my dear grandmother. So much do I love her that I take better care of Fifi than I do myself. It hurts my heart to sell her. But one must give up childish things, no? For twelve euros, my old friend Fifi can be your new friend. I like my friends to be unstuffed, so I pass. What else do you like? This spoon looks familiar. You can get a Sunday spoon like that in only one place. From a hotel in an amusement park which is said to be haunted. It is very special, and yet I sell for only 12 euros. A spoon is a spoon. I'll give you one euro for it. You cannot get a spoon like this in all of Paris. It is worth 12 euros. I don't think I want it after all. What else do you like? How much do you want for this spoon? The price is 12 euros. I don't think I want it after all. What else do you like? What do you want for this train engine? That is the favorite toy of my brother. My sister paints it orange to spite him and still my brother loves it. He lets me sell it only because today he is an engineer and no longer needs a toy train. The price is 15 euros. An orange train? I think one euro is all it's worth. For my brother's favorite toy, any less than 15 euros is an insult. I don't think I want it after all. What else do you like? I might want this book on gardening. That book makes everyone who reads it an expert. Read it and your thumb, it turns green right before your eyes. It is yours for 25 euros. 13 euros is more my speed. That book is a classic. I take no less than 25 euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? How much do you want for this spoon? The price is 12 euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? How much did you say Fifi was? She costs 12 euros. 9 euros sounds about right to me. Voila. What else do you like? The orange locomotive is how much? The price is 15 euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you come back, maybe then I have what you like. I'll remember that. Merci. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. If you like the bargains, you have come to the right place. What captures the eyes? Well... How expensive is this bowling ball? Orange is my favorite color. 80 euro. Would you take 20 euros for it? It is yours. See anything else you like? What's the price of this lava lamp? That lamp is very special. The truck which rises and falls inside it, unlike any I have ever seen. Watching it will entertain you for hours, and I am selling it for only 20 euro. Would you take 15 euros instead? It is yours. See anything else you like? These might come in handy. I guess. A can full of pencils? Very handy. And only 10 euro. I'd rather pay you 5 euros. It is yours. See anything else you like? I should probably get this book on makeup. Everyone can use a book on makeup. Even a pretty girl like you. It is yours for 24 euro. Will you take 12 euros for it? It is yours. See anything else you like? What is this? 
That is as close to a magic wand as you will ever find outside of a fairy tales. It was crafted by a magician who is said to have given it true magical powers. This is why for it I ask 85 euro. I'll pay you 21 euros for it. It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Yeah, new things come and old things go all the time. You must come back. I might just do that. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Monsieur Marchand, à votre service. Bonjour, monsieur Marchand. American tourist? Sort of. Is that okay? I like Americans. They are smart. I sell good stuff and they can tell. So, what are you going to buy? Well... You're selling a manhole cover? It is a genuine Parisian manhole cover. One which would make a fine souvenir for someone back home. And it is only 45 euros. I'll give you 11 euros for it. The metal it's made of is worth more than that. 45 euros, take it or leave it. I don't think I want it after all. What else tickles the fancy? What's in here? A movie? Oui, it contains an American short film. I'm not sure if it is about a beloved beast of burden in Tibet or about someone who talks a lot, but it has won many awards. And the fact that it is in a nice blue canister makes it well worth 84 euro. I'll buy it. Vendu. Oops, I'm gonna have to pass, running low on money. What else tickles the fancy? This book on car repair might come in handy. If you are the driver of a car, you must have that book. You never know when something is going to break or wear out or just boom, explode. Peace of mind, that is what that little book gives you. And it is yours for just 11 euro. I think 8 euros would be more appropriate. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? Actually, I can't buy anything because I don't have enough money. You wish to make money? You can paint for me. Paint for you? Allow me to explain. The tourists, uh, they like to buy hand-painted reproductions of famous works of art. But as you can see, it is difficult for me to paint them. But for a young woman such as you, it is easy. You want me to paint the reproductions? You see? The lines are already there. You look at the original painting, you put paint on your brush, you paint between the lines. Voila! A painting which the tourists will gobble up. And I pay you 15 euros for each one you complete. Do you wish to start now? Well, sure, if that's okay. But of course.
Monsieur, how's this? You have done it wrong. I cannot pay you for this, because I cannot sell this. I'm sorry. Let me try again, please. Go. Paint another. I throw this one out. But please, no more mistakes. I am not a rich man, you know. Monsieur, how's this? Ah, you have done it wrong again. I think maybe I need to take a break. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. You cannot stay away. This is good. What do you like? Hmm. The truth is, I don't have enough money to buy anything. That is not good. When you can buy, you come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Uh-oh. Dad made me promise not to go anywhere by myself after dark. This'll have to wait until tomorrow. I get flour all over you. Oh, and Heather called and told me about your luggage? No worries. I have plenty of clothes in every size imaginable. Your bedroom's down that hall. The airline lost my luggage once, told me it was gone for good and paid me a hundred dollars. Then five years later, my suitcase shows up on my doorstep. And a bill for the hundred dollars they'd paid me. Plus interest. It showed up five years later. What? You don't believe me? Of course I do. The worst part was I had to toss out almost everything that was in it. Clothes, makeup. I mean, the stuff was five years old, right? You like chocolate chip cookies? I love chocolate chip cookies. So do I. And the nice thing is, I'm about three pounds shy of being the perfect size 12 that I need to be for Minette. I have a very high metabolism, so I make cookies, I eat cookies, and since you're here, I share cookies. Why does Manette want you to be a size 12? Contractually, I have to be a size 12. See, Manette is into curves, so she designs clothes for full-figured curvy women. Because I signed on to be her fitting model, I have to maintain the ideal size 12 weight and shape. What's a fitting model? A fitting model puts on samples from a designer's latest line, so the designer can create each piece on a real live person, instead of a dress form. It's not very exciting. In fact, it's totally boring. Plus, you're always getting stabbed with pins. But it pays the bills. Does anyone else live here? Nope. It's just me. And you now. Managed to get a short-term lease. Soon as I'm done being Minette's fitting model, I am out of here. Can you think of anyone who might be out to get Minette? Well, Dieter, obviously. Dieter von Schwesterkrank? He and Minette went out for about six months. Then all of a sudden, last April, Minette dumped him. Just tossed him aside like last month's edition of Vogue. Do you know why she broke it off? No idea. Although I suspect it has something to do with the fact that Dieter lets his pet boa constrictor run loose in that photographic studio of his. There's a snake in his studio? That's what I said. Don't you believe me? Well, I... I guess. Hardly anybody knows about it. I think it may be illegal. If you happen to be in there, be careful. Heather wants me to pick up an envelope from you. Oh yeah, it's right over there. 
Heather needed a bunch of personal information so they can pay me, but I refused to give it out over the phone. I'm real paranoid about that sort of stuff. Don't ask me why, I just am. Go ahead and take it to her. See you later. See ya. Forget something. Guess I'll be running along. Ciao, Bella.
Hello? It's me. How was your run? Jog. It was definitely a jog. And the best part is, it's over. What's going on, Nan? You cannot believe how high-strung Manette is. Why do you say that? Well, the first time I walked into her office, I was almost decapitated by the potted plant she'd just thrown. She threw a potted plant at you? Before she even knew you? That was rude. Actually, she was throwing it at Heather, her assistant. Oh, and Bess, according to Manette, when something is cool, she says it's totally rude. Rude. You know, that's got a ring to it. He is one rude dude. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna start saying that. Have you ever heard of a fashion photographer named Dieter von Schwesterkrank? No, but I'll bet he's young, German, and cute. Why do you say that? Because I have a sixth sense about these things. Go ahead, Nancy. Describe him in all his luscious Teutonic detail. Well, he's young, German, and cute. See? Why do you ask, Nan? Knowing how clued in you two are to the world of high fashion, I just thought I'd check to see what you knew about him. Please, I know as much about fashion as Bess knows about brain surgery. Can't argue with you there. You should see what she's wearing. I heard that. Someone has been sending Minette threatening letters. You mean someone's been threatening her life? Well, not in so many words. I've only seen one of the letters she's gotten, and it was just kind of vaguely threatening. The end is near, that sort of thing. Do you think the threats are what's causing Minette to act so bizarrely? Or is her bizarre behavior the reason why she's been getting threats? Good questions. And there's only one way to answer them. Find out who sent those letters. Just be careful, Nancy, or you might start getting threatening letters. You should see how cool, calm, and collected Minette's assistant Heather is, even when Minette is totally wigging out. I don't get it. I mean, how could anyone work for a woman who goes around wearing a mask all the time? Despite the way Minette treats her, Heather seems almost protective of her. Stockholm Syndrome. What? The Stockholm Syndrome. It's when a person who's being held hostage starts to sympathize with his or her captor. I learned that in Basic Psych. How come you remember stuff like that and I don't? Probably because you didn't take Basic Psych? Oh, right! That's it for now. Keep us posted. Talk to you soon.
Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? I finally met Minette. So what's she like? Very temperamental. It's like working around dynamite. One false move and she goes off. And I mean she goes off. Is she talented? She thinks she is, I can tell you that. Big ego? Huge. Self-centered? Totally. Oh boy. I didn't tell you who my roommate is, did I? Is it somebody we know? Jing Jing Ling. Jing Jing Ling? The model? You're rooming with JJ Ling, the famous Australian model? Yep. You're not talking about me, are you? Oh my gosh, that was her? That was JJ Ling? Joe, just calm down. I'm calm. I'm very calm. I am completely calm. The heck you are. Now sit down. You're hyperventilating. Parts of Paris are real quaint, like you can buy stuff from these vendors in the park, but if you want to get a good deal, you have to haggle with them. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a pain. Oh, Frank, where's your spirit of free enterprise? What kind of stuff do they have, Nancy? Everything imaginable. It's like a garage sale, only in a park. I love garage sales. I hate garage sales. Plus, their inventory is always changing, so people keep going back to them just to see what new stuff they have. I wish haggling was common in this country. There's nothing better than feeling like you've gotten yourself a really good deal on something. And when somebody rips you off? Nobody rips me off, Frank. Okay, except for that bogus concert ticket I bought from Gerald the budding juvenile delinquent Higginbotham in junior high school. But I was young then, very young. I'll check back with you later. Au revoir. Au riv... Au riv... Ditto.
I'm sorry to bother you, but are you Jean-Michel Traquenard? Not Traquenard. It is Jean-Michel Traquenard. Jean-Michel Traquenard. Traquenard! 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 Enough! What can I do for you, Mademoiselle? Drew. Nancy Drew. I've just started working for Manette, as an assistant. Oh? What uh, happened to Ezer? Ezer? Ezer. Ezer Mickey. Ezer Mickey. Huh? Oh, Heather McKay. No, Heather still works for Manette. I'm kind of working for both of them. Our Lady of the Mask has fired three assistants in the past five months. <laughs> I hope you are not next. In fact, that Ezer has managed to avoid the axe for this long is uh, truly remarkable. Here, I'm supposed to give these photos to you. They came straight from Dieter von Schwesterkronk's darkroom. I printed them up myself. You are quite doué as a photo developer. Bravo for you, Nancy Drew. Merci. I was afraid Ezer had forgotten. So, you had the pleasure of meeting Herr von Schwesterkrank, eh? It sounds like you don't like him. Not like Dieter? C'est impossible. Dieter is a very uh, enterprising young man, which in most cases is good, but when arrogance enters the picture, pfft. So, do you, like Ezer, hope to leave your mark on the world of couture? Would it be bad if I said yes? In the world of couture, a single creation worn by someone famous to a high-profile event, such a dress can be worth a fortune in publicity, which makes it a desperately competitive world. A dog-eat-dog -dog world. A world where bad things can and do happen to good people. You must order something. I insist. La carte, s'il vous plaît. Oh, but I'm really not hungry. Mademoiselle. Thank you. I mean, merci. Order anything you want. Everything here is superb. And Henri, he is the best waiter in all of France. Well, in that case... The croque monsieur sounds good. Très bien. Merci, Henri. Ajoutez-le à mon édition, s'il vous plaît. Certainement. Ah! Ham and cheese grilled on a baguette. One of my favorites. Yum! Mmm! Mm. You're right. The food here is good. Excusez-moi, mademoiselle. So, what else do you wish from me? Do you have any idea why Manette wears that mask? I believe she is the victim of botched plastic surgery. Do you have proof? No, but I tell you this, Nancy. Some women with noses that would put birds of prey to shame are perfectly content with their appearance, while others with acceptable features are convinced they are more hideous than Frankenstein. Self-image. It can make people do strange things. If you had to name Minette's worst enemy, who would that be? Hugo Batelli, without a doubt. Not only do he and Minette have similar design styles, so that they are constantly competing for the same coup de clients, but both of them are unthinking, socially inept egoists. It is a rare week that goes by without one of them insulting the other. Has it ever gone beyond words? Not to my knowledge. You ask very curious questions, Mademoiselle Drew. They make me think you know more than you are saying. And as a member of the press, I'm not sure that I like that. Do you have a real office somewhere? When I'm writing my column, I go to my office at Glam Glam. When I'm researching my column, I come here. I have my telephone, which can do everything save things in Marseillaise, good food, and a chair for whomever stops by. How can I contact this Hugo Butterly person? His phone number is right here in my digital assistant. Of course, it's extremely unlikely that you will be able to talk to him in person. Even I occasionally have trouble penetrating the wall of sycophants that surrounds him. So, what else do you wish from me? I'm staying with JJ Ling, the model. Do you know her? 
But of course, I know everyone who is anyone when it comes to fashion. And Gigi, she is a breath of fresh air. But what about JJ Ling? You mean Gigi Ling? No, I mean JJ. Gigi. JJ. En français, you pronounce G like J and J like G. She may very well be JJ in America, but in France, she is Gigi. How well does she get along with Manette? From what I hear, very well. Which is surprising when you consider all things. I assume she told you how she was tricked into a current contract with Minette. No, she didn't. Minette tricked her? If you do not know, you will have to ask Gigi. Just because I know everything that happens in the world of haute couture does not mean that I repeat everything. I'd better get going. D'accord. What's up? Do you work for Manette because you want to be a fashion designer too? Well, I studied at Rhode Island School of Design and Central St. Martin's in London, so I kind of like to think that I already am a fashion designer. I work for Manette mostly so I can develop some contacts and get a feel for the business end of things. When do you think you'll be ready to go off on your own? I don't know. Heather, my pencil's missing. It was right here and now it's gone. You walked off with it again. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I'm telling you, it's not here. Did you check behind your ear? Oh. When Manette fires me, that's when I'll go off on my own. And as you just heard, that could be any day now. Here's that envelope I picked up from JJ. I almost forgot. No problem. I'll let you get back to work. Okay. If you need to talk to Manette, good luck. She's playing that ridiculous online game she's obsessed with and refuses to do anything else until she gets the highest score. It is so aggravating. Manette, Manette. Hello, Manette. Shh. That's a no-no. Mr. Butterly? Who is it?
is this? Well, it's obviously not who you think it is. My name's Nancy Drew. What a nanny, Nancy Drew. I'm a kind of a friend of Minette's. Her, I know. Is that smelly cheese by any chance going to her? Whatever for? Neither she nor her work needs any help from me to stink. Now, if you'll excuse me, whoever you are, I'm going to hang up. Goodbye, then. No, wait. I just want to... Rats. studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobartoli.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Nancy, get the phone. Nancy, if you don't get that phone, you're fired. Nancy? All right, that does it. Nancy, you're fired. Nancy? There. Get the phone, please. Nancy, get the phone. Bonjour, Manette's House of Design. Bonjour. My name is Lynn Manrique. I'm with the Modern History Department at UC Kearns in the States, and I'm following up on the letter I sent to Minette about two weeks ago concerning Noisette Tornade. Noisette Tornade? It's that historian person, isn't it? Tell her we're sorry, but Minette is extremely busy and won't be able to get back to her for at least six weeks. I'm sorry, but... I heard. Well, six weeks it is, then. Thank you, anyway. You have reached the Paris 
studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobutterly.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Forget something? Minette is so into that online game, she won't even talk to me. Tell me about it. To have any chance of meeting her deadlines, she has to keep working. But there she is, mesmerized once again by that silly game. Wait a minute. How good are you at computer games? Not too bad. I stink at them. But if somebody could get online, play that stupid game, and get the highest score while pretending to be her, she wouldn't know the difference and we could all get back to work. Anyway, it would be worth a shot. Thanks for your help. Have fun. Minette? 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 Nancy, get the phone. Nancy, if you don't get that... Bonjour, Minette's House of Design. Bonjour, est-ce que c'est Heather? This is Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. Oh my, that name is familiar. But for the life of me, I cannot remember why. Nancy Drew. This is going to drive me mad. May I ask who this is? Prudence Rutherford. Prudence Rutherford? Oh, shoot. I know you. I talked to you when I was working at the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm Nancy Drew, remember? You sent me a copy of your fire ruby necklace. You know, the one that had been stolen? Oh, good heavens, yes, of course. Nancy Drew. Why, as I understand it, it was largely because of your investigatory prowess that my real necklace was recovered soon thereafter. What on earth is a nascent detective like you doing answering the telephone for Minette? Get down from there. Excuse me, dear. Nancy, tell hear? her the designs oh, are done and will be shipped to her by the end of the week. Oh, then go to the work there. table and finish them. You, you want me to finish them? The instructions are all right there. Piece of cake. Are you? Why my husband insists on sitting here in my study in his soggy tennis togs when he has the run of the whole villas beyond me? Oh, dear. Thanks to that scallywag, I've quite forgotten what we were talking about. I was just about to tell you that I'm working for Manette because I'm interested in fashion design. Fashion design? You? Yes. 
See, the more I learned about the way ancient Maya dressed, the more interested I became in how modern people dress. That's just silly, dear. Yes, well, in any case, we'll be sending you the finished designs for the ensemble very shortly. Wonderful! I'm sure they're going to knock my socks off and blow me away, as you young people like to say. Lucille, get the deodorizer, please. Philip's been in here again, I'm afraid. Goodbye, dear, or shall I say, à tout à l'heure. Forget something? Thanks for your help. Whenever you have questions, just ask. Are the designs I'm supposed to finish for Prudence Rutherford under here? You got it. First thing I need to do is flip up this plastic sheet.
<laughs> Looks good to me. You're on a roll.
Well, that's that. All three outfits are ready for you to send to Prudence. Good job! I should wait until Heather sends these off to Prudence. Forget something? Talk to you later. Allez, bye bye. Minette? Happen to know what Manette's login is? I'm afraid I have no idea. Manette? Forget something? I'll let you get back to work. Okay. It's late. I can do this tomorrow. you're back. I'm really bored. Let's play hangman. You know how to play, right? Hangman? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Great. Okay, I'll think of a six-letter word and you try to guess what it is. Ready? Ready. A. That's a winner. E. Correct. M.
T P H R N Right you are. C. Right you are. D. That's a winner. L. You won. Play again? Sure. E. That's a winner. A. O. Nope. U. S H You lose M P Right you are R G. Incorrect. I. Bingo. N. Right you are. L. That's a winner. C. You won. Play again? Sure. A. Bingo. E. Right you are. L. S. That's a winner. T. M. Oopsie. N. P. H. G. Afraid not. F. Nope. R. You won. Play again? Sure. A. That's a winner. C. Incorrect. M. Wrong. N. Nope. H. F. Wrong. P. R. Bingo. T. Oopsie. S. K. J. L. Here's the word. You lose. Play again? No thanks. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. Guess I'll be running along. Okay. Forget something. Let's play hangman. Okay. You know the rules, right? Yep, I sure do. Great. Okay. I'll think of a six-letter word and you try to guess what it is. Ready? Ready. A. E. Bingo. O. U. R. P. You lose. C. Correct. H. Sorry. M. 
Sorry. N. Right you are. K. Oopsie. D. Incorrect. B. G. Here's the word. You lose. Play again? Sure. B. A. Bingo. E. Right you are. M. Correct. N. L. Oopsie. R. Right you are. T. That's a winner. C. Wrong. H. P. G. K. Wrong. O. Incorrect. D. F. And the word was... You lose. Play again? Sure. A. Incorrect. E. O. Bingo. M. N. Nope. H. That's a winner. C. Nope. K. Wrong. T. Oopsie. P. Incorrect. G. L. F. And the word was... You lose. Play again? Sure. A. Wrong. E. Wrong. I. O. Correct. U. M. You lose. N. Incorrect. P. You lose. S. That's a winner. T. H. L. That's a winner. C. F. Here's the word. You lose. Play again? Sure. A. Bingo. E. Bingo. H. Sorry. P. Correct. G. M. Oopsie. N. T. Bingo. C. Bingo. R. You won. Play again? Sure. A. E. Correct. I. Incorrect. O. That's a winner. L. T. Correct. R. Correct. M. F. C. N. Oopsie. H. Sorry. D. Incorrect. P. That's a winner.
B. K. And the word was... You lose. Play again? No, thanks. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. I'll be back in a bit. Ciao, Bella. studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobartoli.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Do you know what Manette's password is? Nope. I'm in. Game on.
the highest score. Or should I say Carol did? Oh my gosh, I did it. Heather, I won. I got the highest score. Send Nancy in here. We've got work to do. And I am on a roll. You're a genius. Now get in there before she decides she has to beat that score. Get ah, you have some stuff for me. Let's see it. The lava lamp is perfect, and these rings? Beyond rude. But the rest of this is garbage. I don't care what you do with it so long as you get me more stuff. Good stuff, stuff I can use, now go! I need inspiration, Nancy. Get me more stuff. I'm going to need a few more euros. I gave you all the money you needed to get the job done, and if you've squandered it, then you'd just better figure out how to replace it. Now go. What's up? Talk to you later. Okay. Mademoiselle Dru, what is it now? Do you think I could order something? Order anything you like, but know that this time you will pay for it. No problem. Le carte? May I please have the creme de glace? Très bien. Ça fait 5 euros. That will be 5 euros. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have enough money. Oh la la. Je suis désolé, Henri. Mais la jeune fille n'a pas d'assez d'argent. I bring food no more to you. No more. 
Ces Américains ne connaissent rien. So, what else do you wish from me? Do you think I could order something? You heard Henri? Unfortunately, your days of ordering food at the Café Kiki are fini. I'd better get going. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. The tourist returns. I'd like to sell the stuff I have in this bag. Would you be interested? If the stuff is good, perhaps. You let me see? Sure. For this, I give you 40 euros. Deal. Good. I buy from you, now you buy from me. What do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. Next time I have what you want. Sounds good. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What captures the eyes this time? Well, let's see. Is this just red lipstick? That is red lipstick, like you will find in nowhere else. So red and full of moisture that your lips will look like tropical flowers from dawn until dusk. To you, I sell it for only 19 euros. How about 5 euros? 19 euros, that is the price. I'll take it. It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Come back soon. Perhaps I will have new things. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What captures the eyes this time? Well, let's see. Does this cost very much? The traffic cone is one of my favorites. So colorful and so useful. With it, I myself learn to park my car parallel. And I ask only 10 euro for it. I'll give you 5 euros for it. It is yours. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Come back soon. Perhaps I will have new things. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? Well, let's see. This thing costs how much? 35 euro. I don't think I want it after all. What else tickles the fancy? How much did you say yak costs? 84 euro. I think it's probably worth more like 42 euros. Vendu. Oops, I don't have enough money to pay you that. What else tickles the fancy? Can never have too many of these, I guess. It is an excellent coffee can. I practically give it to you for seven euro. Would you take four euros for it? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. I get new things all the time. You must come back. I may just do that. Goodbye. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? I wouldn't mind painting another picture or two. Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Magnifique! You have done excellent work. And for that, I reward you. Do you wish to paint another? Definitely. But of course. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? Well, let's see. This thing costs how much? 35 euros. I'll buy it. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? Where have I seen this arm before? That is the arm of a robotic monster with a very interesting history. The police detective who sold it to me says the arm figured into the capture of a dangerous criminal who operated out of an amusement park in America. I sell it to you for 18 euros. <laughs> a real steal, if you will pardon the expression. Make that 14 euros and you've got a deal. Vendu. Uh, oh, forget it. I don't have enough money. What else tickles the fancy? How much did you say this mechanic alarm is? Only 18 euros. I'll give you half that. Say 9 euros. Vendu. 
What the hell tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Maybe you will want something next time. Maybe. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? Well, let's see. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Maybe you will want something next time. Maybe. Au revoir. Au revoir. More stuff. How delightfully rude. Show me. Oh, I love the miniature traffic cone. Rude, very rude. But the rest of this is garbage. I need more. Get me more stuff. Get me stuff. Go. Get me stuff. Go. What is it now? I hear that you used to date Minette. That is correct. But you're not dating her now? No. Because... You would have to ask her. She broke up with me by leaving a message on my cell phone, and she hasn't said a word to me since. It was an unforgivable outrage. I don't claim to be a paragon of virtue, but... Even I didn't deserve that. You've had no contact at all with Minette since she broke it off? None. All my dealings with her now are strictly professional, with Heather handling any and all communication between us. Have you tried communicating with her anonymously? Are you accusing me of something? Should I be? Of course not. You know, curiosity is not necessarily a good thing, Fräulein. I'd try to remember that if I were you. How well do you know J.J. Ling? As well as I care to. The way she's always pulling out that annoying word game and begging people to play. And did you know that she won a lottery back in the States? That's right, she's actually filthy rich. What kind of person models when she's filthy rich? There's something not quite right about that girl. Is it true that you keep a pet boa constrictor in here? Don't be ridiculous. I would never keep an exotic pet like that in here. Although I may have lost an exotic pet like that in here once. You mean there is a snake in here somewhere? I'm sure it's found its way out by now. They get pretty active when they're hungry, you know, and I haven't seen it for months. But, uh, just in case, watch where you step. It was fun talking to you. Adios.
You cannot stay away. This is good. What do you like? Hmm. Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. Next time I have what you want. Sounds good. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What captures their eyes this time? Well, let's see. This piece of stone looks interesting. Your instincts are very good. It is not just a piece of stone. It is a piece of history. That is an ancient key from an ancient civilization. I sell it to you for 53 euros. Would you take 13 euros instead? 53 euros. That is my price. Then I'm not interested. See anything else you like? Actually, I don't see anything else. Come back soon. Perhaps I will have new things. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Rumi, how's it going? Let's play hangman. Okay. You know the rules, right? Yep, I sure do. Great. Okay. I'll think of a six-letter word and you try to guess what it is. Ready? Ready. A. Sorry. E. Right you are. C. Bingo. O. I. Bingo. P. Bingo. L. Bingo. K. You won. Play again? Sure. A. E. Correct. I. O. That's a winner. M. N. P. Incorrect. L. Correct. B. G. Oopsie. R. Right you are. S. T. K. That's a winner. C. You won. Play again? Sure. A. Bingo. E. Bingo. O. M. N. Right you are. L. Bingo. C. Bingo. D. You won. Play again? Sure. A. Afraid not. E. Bingo. I. Right you are. O. Correct. G. 
You lose. L. You lose. M. Right you are. P. C. Correct. N. You won. Play again? Sure. A. Bingo. E. Afraid not. O. Right you are. G. L. That's a winner. M. N. Bingo. B. R. Sorry. P. Sorry. K. Nope. T. C. D. H. Want to see the word? You lose. Play again? No, thanks. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. I'll let you get back to your cookie dough. Take care. Not stay away. This is good. What do you like? Hmm. Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. Next time I have what you want. Sounds good. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? Will you still pay me if I do one of those paintings for you? Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Sure thing. But of course.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Sure thing. But of course. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? May we? Oui. But of course. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Yes, please. But of course. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? 
Yes, please. But of course. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What do you wish to buy? Well, let's see. How much did you say yak costs? It is for you. That's a lot of money. How about 63 euros? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Maybe you will want something next time. Maybe. Au revoir. Au revoir. More stuff. How delightfully rude. Show me. The film canister is totally rude. How absolutely positively rude. The lava lamp, the rings, the canister, the cone. They're perfect. I adore them all. I'll take care of this other junk you bought. Now go away. I have work to do. I said I have work to do. I told you, she's not answering her phone. Heather, I don't want excuses. I want JJ now. Nancy? It seems that Minette has finally thought up all the designs she needs for her spring collection. But instead of putting them down on paper, like a normal designer, she insists on creating them on a live model. Hence her sudden, desperate need for JJ. Why isn't JJ answering her phone? Who knows? Sometimes I think she's even more neurotic than Minette. I'll head over to her apartment and see what the problem is. Heather, I don't want excuses. I want JJ now. Go like the wind. It'll be dark in a few minutes. I'm going to head back to Jingjing's.
Hey, Rumi, how's it going? Minette needs you at her studio. In fact, she's been screaming for you, literally. Too bad. I'm not going anywhere until these mint chocolate chip cookies are finished. But if I go back there without you, Manette will fire me. Too bad. Silly me, I just said that, didn't I? Look, go to the studio. I'll finish those for you, okay? I'll do a great job, I promise. Well, I'll head over there. But I'm gonna call you before I set one foot inside Manette's studio. And if those aren't done, or if you try to lie... Just go, please. Well, all right. Everything you need is right here. Recipe, baking sheet, mixing bowl, measuring cups and spoons, ingredients, and if you mess up and want to start over, just turn around and dump it down the sink. One problem though, the recipe calls for fresh mint, only I had to toss the sprig I had because it was mouldy, so you're going to have to go out and find some more, which could be hard because there's some kind of mint shortage thing going on. Oh, and I'm also out of brown sugar. I think there's a way to substitute for it using molasses somehow, but that's your problem now. Remember, I'm going to call you when I get to Minette's. If those cookies aren't done, I'm going to go shopping instead, and Minette's going to go bonkers. Ta-ta! Well, here's some molasses. What are books doing in here? What in the world is JJ doing with books on electrical engineering? What is it now? Thanks for your help. Adios. Mademoiselle Drew, what is it now? I'd better get going. Au revoir, mademoiselle. JJ, end of conversation. Why are you here and not JJ? I want JJ. Now go.
Bonjour. I have many new things, you see? Well, you sure do. You are sure to find something you like. Is this mint? Oui, that is mint. The growers of mint because of them all over Paris, all over France. No mint except for here. I have very good mint, not moldy. I sell to you for 50 euros. For one sprig of mint? 25 euros tops. No one has mint but me. You want mint, you must pay 50 euros. I don't think I want it after all. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. As you can see, you have many new things to choose from. What intrigues you? Well, let's see. What's in here? If you are cooking, and you run out of an ingredient, that book tells you what you can use in its place. So if you must cook, you must have that book. Fortunately, I charge only 8 euro. 6 euros is more my speed. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? What's this book about? That is a very good book about codes which are commonly used. It is a mere 15 euro. How about 8 euros? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? What is this thing? I have been told that it is probably a decoder used by those who resisted the German occupation of World War II. Really? How much do you want for it? Nothing. It is not for sale. It is a piece of history. I have it only as an eye catcher. But you're a businessman. You must be willing to part with it for something. Uh, I will trade you one piece of history for another. You give me a battle of Mouton Fouette in 1968, and I give you the decoder. Deal. Uh, what's Mouton Fouette? Mouton Fouette 1968 is a very rare beverage that is usually stored underground. Unfortunately, finding an intact bottle has become next to impossible. But if you want the decoder, the impossible is what you must do. So, get me a bottle of Mouton Fouette 1968. I will accept nothing less. In the meantime, what else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? I wouldn't mind painting another picture or two. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Sure thing. Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? I'd love to, if that's okay. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. You will ask to return. I have many new things. You see? Yes, you do. I could use a French-English dictionary. How much? This is the best French-English dictionary you can buy in all of Paris. Not too big, simple to use, hundreds and hundreds of words. I practically give it to you for 30 euros. Will you let me have it for 15 euros? For this? That is nothing. The price is 30 euros. I'll take it. It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? I wouldn't mind painting another picture or two. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? You bet. Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? You want how much for the mint? Fifty euros. I'll take it. Voila. What else do you like? Is this Ichido book any good? That book is very good. If you are around dangerous people, then you must get this book. You pay only 23 euros. Would you take half that? 12 euros? Voila. What else do you like? The truth is, I don't have enough money to buy anything. That is not good. When you can buy, you come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle.
Hmm. Brown sugar. First thing I should do is get out that mint and chop it up. I'll just chop up this mint. There, I'm ready to start cooking.
They look okay to me. Hello? Well, are they done? They sure are. Describe them. Describe them? Describe them. I've made them before, so I'll know you're lying if you fail to mention the one thing that makes them different from other cookies. Well... They're very... round? Wrong. Unless you want Minette to throw a major hissy fit the next time she sees you, I suggest you try again. I think I'll throw this batch out. I think I'll throw this batch out. Must be the mint that makes their edges turn up like that. I'll just cool the cookies off on this rack and I'll be all done. Hello? Well, are they done? They sure are. Describe them. 
Well, their edges curl upwards? Bingo! Nice going! Because of you, Minette is about to become a very happy camper. Me again. We're both on, Nan. What's up? I had to deliver some prints to this fashion editor named Jean-Michel Traconard. What's he like? Bald, heavyset, and approaching middle age. That's right, Bess. How'd you know? I told you, I have a sixth sense about these things. More likely it has something to do with all those fashion magazines you're constantly reading. I hardly ever read fashion magazines. Do you ever read Glam Glam? Ooh, I love Glam Glam. Well, that's the one he writes for. See? You probably saw his picture in there once and filed it away in your subconscious. Oh. How come my subconscious never seems to file away anything practical? Anyway, when it comes to the Paris fashion scene, this Traconard guy pretty much knows everything and everyone. So he's pretty helpful? Uh, mostly he's pretty arrogant. Well, anybody who does business out of a cafe can't be all bad. He does business out of a cafe? Yeah, Nancy just said that, didn't you? Uh, no. Your subconscious strikes again. Dang, am I good or what? I told you guys before I left that I'd be rooming with Jing Jing Ling, right? You mean, you really are? Yes. We thought you were kidding. What's she like? Well... In order to work for Manette, she needs to gain a little weight, so she's constantly making cookies for herself. What? Models can't eat cookies? That goes against the laws of nature. JJ can. In fact, she has to. She's a couple pounds shy of being the perfect size 12 that Manette needs. But that's not fair. All this time thinking that I could eat cookies and models couldn't is the only way I could feel superior to them. You just totally destroyed my self-image. Well, look at it this way. Jing Jing Ling eats cookies. Jing Jing Ling is a model. Bess Marvin eats cookies. Ergo, Bess Marvin is a model. Or could be a model. You know, in some parallel universe type thing. Nice try, George. I called Minette's rival, Hugo Butterly. And? Well, he's definitely capable of sending Minette those threats. But he makes such beautiful clothes. Believe me, he's got a mean streak in him a mile wide. Great. I finally find a designer whose clothes look terrific on me, but by the time I get a job and make enough money to be able to afford them, he'll be in prison designing license plates instead of capris. That's it for now. Bye-bye. Soyez prudent. Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? That's it for now. Don't be a stranger. Take care.
get the phone, please? That phone is dry. Minette's house of design. I need to speak to Minette. May I tell her who's calling? No, just get her on the phone. I'm afraid I'm going to have to take a message. Get her on the phone now. Who is this? Are you going to connect me with Minette or not? No. Wrong answer. studio of Hugo Butterley, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobutterley.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? The truth is, I don't have enough money to buy anything. That is not good. When you can buy, you come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Looks like Dieter. I wonder what he's doing. Hey, Dieter! Hi! No, wait! Dieter! Dieter! What did he run away for? That was weird. Looks like he left something on the bench. These must have fallen out of his pocket. Was that Tornad? That's the woman who that historian was calling about. Why would Dieter be carrying this around?
Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well, to be honest, I don't have enough money to buy anything. Ah, when you have money, you must come back. I will. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? I'd like to paint some more, if that's okay. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Sure thing. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Definitely. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. Is this parrot very expensive? The price is very reasonable. 20 euro. I'm willing to pay 15 euros for it. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir.
have to get them out of there. Who? What happened? This little box came for me, and when I opened it, all these bugs came pouring out. They're all over the place in there. You have to get them out before they lay eggs or something. Maybe you should just call an exterminator. No! Nothing good ever comes from killing things. Just go in there and put them back in the box they came in. Carefully, don't kill any of them. Don't worry, I'll get them out of there for you. Bless you. Yuck! That must be the box they came in. Dear Miss Minette, the books on the women of the French Resistance, exploits of Noisette Trenade, because she owned the windmill which you now own. Oh, this is from that historian who called before. Maybe she can help me figure out why Dita was carrying that obituary around. This fabric is so strange. It's soft and metallic all at the same time. If I were an insect, where would I hide? Plate time's over, little guy. Or girl. When it comes to making tea, been there, done that. 
here, buggy, buggy, buggy. Ew! I thought working for a fashion designer was going to be glamorous. Fonts. Somehow I don't see Manette getting real excited about fonts. Gotcha! When it comes to making tea, been there, done that. Too slow. Say good night, Tracy.
Here, buggy, buggy, buggy. There, that has got to be the last bug. You can open the door now, Manette. Did you get all of the bugs? Yes, Manette. How many are there? I don't know, nine. Are they all alive? Yes, Manette. Are you sure you didn't kill any? Positive. And they're all in the box? Yes. Okay, listen. I want you to take that box to the park and let those things go. Only I don't want to be here when you come out. Probably the only thing those twisted little vermin are thinking about right now is revenge. Manette, they're cockroaches. Exactly! So I want you to count to ten, and then, and only then, are you to come out of there, all right? Anything you say. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ugh, what a nut job. Not exactly my style, but cool.
Wait a minute. These letters are the same ones that I saw in that memo Heather sent to Manette. Which means the person who sent this must have been Heather. Modern European history, Lynn Manrique. Hello, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Paris. Actually, I talked to you earlier when you tried to call Manette. She's finally calling me back? Wonderful! Please, put her on. Uh, I'd like to, but I'm afraid she's still too busy to talk to you. Oh. But if you don't mind, could I ask you a couple of questions about Noisette Tournade? Certainly. How long did she live in the Moulin, where Manette now has her studio? She lived there for 55 years, from 1949 to 2004. She sold it when she moved to Provence, which is where she passed away. She never married, you know. Very private person. She served as Paris's director of public works for more than 20 years, yet not one person has been able to tell me what her favorite color was. What did she do during the war? From 1942 until the liberation of Paris, Noisette worked as a translator for the Germans by day and an encoder for the French resistance by night. This, as you might imagine, made everyone suspicious of her, both French and Germans alike. And after the war, things got ugly. Especially when people found out she was romantically involved with a German soldier. His name was Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. You're kidding me! Was he by any chance related to Dieter von Schwesterkrank, the fashion photographer? I'm afraid I have no idea. Hans left Paris right after the war and never returned, leaving Noisette to fend for herself. She was tried as a collaborator in 1946 and acquitted, but the experience left her quite bitter. You see, some people said that during the war she took various pieces of artwork, mostly from churches, and stashed them away somewhere so they wouldn't fall into enemy hands. Were they recovered after the war? The artwork remains lost to this day. 
No one knows exactly what Noisette took, or if indeed she took anything. In any case, Noisette was terribly hurt that the city she loved had turned on her like that. After her trial, she told the press that the truth of what she'd done during the war resided in her and in the person and place she loved the most. And that was that. She never spoke of her wartime activities again. I assume that the person she was referring to was Hans von Svesterkronk, who passed away a year or two ago, and that the place was her beloved Moulin, which is why I'm hoping Manette will allow me to visit it. Now, I've got a question for you. In the hours before she died, Noisette was said to have constantly muttered three words... Red left green. Is there anything inside the Mulan that has to do with red left green? Anything at all? No, but I'll keep that in mind and let you know if I see something. I'd appreciate it. Any other questions? What was the French resistance? That was the name given to the various groups of men and women who did their best to undermine Germany's military occupation of France during World War II. Some would engage in strikes and sabotage, while others would collect and pass intelligence along to the Allies. Needless to say, their operations were highly covert and very dangerous. What else can you tell me about the German occupation of Paris? The German army entered Paris on June 14, 1940, and after France formally surrendered on June 22, the Germans controlled the city. They took whatever they wanted, food, supplies, houses, artwork, and dictated how Parisians were to live their lives. Naturally, their presence was deeply resented. Some people ignored the situation as best they could. Some collaborated with the Germans, while others, like those in the resistance, fought back until the city was finally liberated on August 25, 1944. After the war, when she was the director of public works, what kind of things did Moisette do? She oversaw many of the services which the citizens of Paris enjoyed every day. Streets, bridges, parks, their maintenance all came under Noisette's purview. She particularly enjoyed putting various forms of art on permanent display in various public places, especially parks. What's the story behind the Cross of Lorraine? The vertical bar crossed by two horizontal bars is an emblem that was first used by Joan of Arc as well as the Dukes of Lorraine in the 15th century. But during and after World War II, it became a symbol of the French resistance. Nowadays, it's not unusual to see it on statues or monuments commemorating the period in French history from 1940 to 1945. What did you mean when you said Moisset was tried as a collaborator? Collaborators were French citizens who not only failed to resist the occupation, but actually helped the Germans keep it going. Because Noisette had worked for the Germans as a translator and had a German boyfriend, after the war, many of her countrymen automatically accused her of collaboration. When it was revealed that she had been a member of the resistance, instead of exonerating her, that just made some people think she'd been spying for the Germans, too. As I said before, it was an ugly time, one which poor Noisette spent the rest of her life trying to forget. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Call back any time. <laughs> You have reached the Paris studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobutterly.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. <laughs> Me again. We're both on, Nan. What's up? 
I took this very strange phone call from Annette. At least I tried to. What was so strange about it? The guy wouldn't give me his name, and he sounded very hostile, and he had a German accent. And, not long after that, some unknown person sent Minette a box of cockroaches. Ew, yuck. Tell me about it. They got loose all over her office, and she made me find them and put them back in the box. Double yuck. Did any kind of note come with them? Nope. Sending anonymous letters is one thing, but sending live vermin? Sounds to me like things are getting personal. Yeah, let's just hope they don't start to get deadly. It turns out that one of the threatening letters Manette got was sent by none other than her own assistant, Heather McKay. You're kidding. Why would she do that? I have no idea. Guess I'm going to have to ask her. Just be careful. Maybe Manette's flakiness is contagious. The windmill Manette works out of was once owned by a woman named Noisette Tornade, who used to be a resistance fighter during World War II. Was it like her headquarters or something? According to this historian in the States who's doing research on her, she lived there for some 50 years after the war, and she's rumored to have been involved in the theft of artwork that's been missing since the war, and... There's more? And a certain young German fashion photographer who used to date Minette has been carrying around the woman's obituary. Why? I don't know. Yet. yet. Well, I'll let you guys go. Call us any time, preferably soon. Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? I'll check back with you later. Call back anytime. See ya. It's too late to go anywhere now.
Sounds like someone's in the dark room. Mr. Von Schwesterkronk? Are you in there? Who's there? Nancy Drew. I just wanted to ask you some questions. I'm very busy. You'll have to come back. I just wondered what you were doing in Square du Vert Galant Park. I, uh, I was just taking a walk. You dropped an obituary about Noisette Tournade. Shall I leave it for you? There's no need. I don't want it. Why were you carrying it around? Because I, uh, I was going to send it to my grandmother. I thought she knew the woman. That's what she did. You also dropped some kind of trinket. Looks like a miniature clock. That's something my great uncle Hans gave. It's actually a key. It opens the panel over there to the right of the bookshelf. He lived here during the war. The place has been in the family ever since. What's behind the panel? Go ahead and see for yourself. Just be prepared to go a little cuckoo. Mr. Von Schwesterkronk? Are you in there? Who's there? Nancy Drew. I just wanted to ask you some questions. I'm very busy. You'll have to come back. But this is really important. Is there anything I can do to help you? Well, if you want, you could take some stock photos for me. Sure. The list of things I need pictures of is on my desk. You can use the camera I let you borrow. I'll get right on it. Mr. Von Schwesterkronk, it's Nancy Drew again. I really, really need to talk to you. Sorry, too busy. Oh no, the list is in French.
up with this? Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, Mademoiselle. Au revoir. Okay, guys, end of the line. You are out of here. Mr. Von Schwesterkrank, could I ask you something? Sorry, too busy.
Me again. We're both on, man. What's up? Guess I should get back to work. Have fun. Amusez-vous bien. Show off. Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? I'll let you go. Call back anytime. See ya. Did you get the stuffed parrot? Here you go. What's it for, anyway? It's a Manette thing. You wouldn't understand. No one would. Why did you write Manette that threatening letter? What? You think I wrote those letters? I saw the memo you sent Minette about fonts. The letters on it match the letters on one of the threats I found in her dodo box. You opened Minette's dodo box? That's the real reason you didn't want me looking in there, isn't it? Okay. Couple months ago, I got so fed up with her that I... I just had to get back at her somehow. I'd seen how upset those other letters made her, so I sent one of my own, but just that one. And I never intended to really do anything to her. I just wanted her to suffer. You know, emotionally. The way she made you suffer when she started going out with Dieter. You really don't miss a trick, do you? I thought when she dumped him like that that he'd finally come to his senses and realize that I'm the one he should be with. But even now, even after she broke up with him, she still has some kind of weird, sick hold on him. Look, you're not going to tell Minette about this, are you? There's really no need. It'll just upset her all over again. And she's so far behind as it is. And there's no telling how she'd take it out on me. Or on you, for that matter, just for telling her. So don't say anything to her, okay? I'm gonna have to think about it. I'll see you later. What? Why do you wear that mask? This mask is a statement, Nancy. It's my way of telling society that it pays far too much attention to the face. I design clothes for the person. I'm telling society, forget the face. Look at the person. Look at my creations. The colors, the fabrics, the lines I choose. They are meant to enhance the person, not the face. The person. The face is... inconsequential. You don't really expect anyone to buy that, do you? Whether they buy it or not is their problem. Any more questions? Someone with a German accent called for you when you were fitting JJ, but he didn't leave a message. Oh? He sounded kind of angry. I'm sure it wasn't important, so don't worry about it. What else? Why did you break up with Dieter? 
That is absolutely, unequivocally, 100% none of your business. And if you ever ask me anything about Dieter again, you're fired. Now go away and let me work. I said go away. I said go away. I already made Minette her tea. What's up? Talk to you later. Whenever you have questions, just ask. I already made Minette her tea. Mr. Bonschwesterkronk, 
Believe it or not, that key your uncle gave you opened up some kind of passageway. Is it okay if I see where it goes? A passageway? You never said anything about a passageway. Go ahead and explore, that's all you want. Just be careful, this building is very old. Bonjour, madame. I wonder what that symbol means. The year when our despair ended. The year when... My despair began. Looks like some kind of code.
von Schwester Kronk. Could I ask you something? Sorry, too busy. Jingling, is it truly you? Uh, no, this isn't Jingjing. I'm just calling from her phone. From her phone? So you know Jingjing? Are you her friend? Well, yeah, I guess. You are the most lucky person in the monde. I am a big fan of Jingjing. I call her house and leave massage. I call Minette because I know she works there, but she will not talk to me. She is too... Um, what is the word? Paranormal? Uh, you mean paranoid? Yes, yes, paranoid. So, if you are not Jing Jing, why do you call me? This is Zhu, right? Yes, yes, I am Zhu. Well, Zhu, my name is Nancy Drew, and I saw a symbol on the wall when I was in an underground passage not too long ago. It looked like two leaves with two nut-type things attached to them, and I just wondered if you could tell me what it meant or why it was there. Yes, yes, of course I can. But first, you must have Jing write something for me. Write something for you? You must have her write something that I can keep. Have her write. Zhu, my love, Jing. Then, take the metro to the Danfer Rochereau station, enter the catacombs, find the bones from the Magdalene Cemetery, and put the autograph in the skull below the plaque. Have her write, Zhu, my love, Jing. Go to the catacombs, find the Magdalene Cemetery bones, and leave the autograph in a skull. Yes, yes, exactly that. Don't worry about desecrating the person whose bones they may be. The skull, it is a fake. My friend and I put it there, and so, after you deliver it, you call me and I tell you all about the symbol you saw. But what if Jing Jing refuses? Then, Nancy Drew, it seems we will both be very disappointed. I said go away. What's up? Well, I'll see you later. Have fun!
Mademoiselle Drou, what is it now? The picture of Manette that was in the June issue of Glam Glam, was it cropped, do you remember? I'm sure it was. Most photographs are these days. Why? Do you think I could see the uncropped picture? As it happens, all the pictures which I use in my articles are stored right here in my digital assistant. I will help you, mademoiselle. But only if you help me first. You see, the owner of this cafe, he faces a crease. The person who makes desserts for him has stepped out for his customary two and a half hour break. Unfortunately, a bus full of American teenagers has pulled up and all are clamoring for parfait. So, I will tell the owner that you will make the parfait, and when you do, he will be indebted to me and will allow me to continue using this table as my office. And I will be indebted to you and will allow you to see the picture. You see how it works? Yeah, I get the picture. Okay, looks like I've got chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, strawberry ice cream, caramel ice cream, bananas, tapioca balls, berries, and whipped cream. The first one I have to make is an exwa. C'est pas bien. He does not sound too happy with me. Now they want a long fair. I think that was French for you blew it. Next up, a tropical. Now they want a long fair. Bien. Next is a corbeau.
C'est bien. Yes. One mystique coming up. A fantasy. Merci. I'm getting there. A Lulu. C'est bien. Now I have to make an X Y. He liked it. Now I have to make an X Y. Here comes a fantasy. Did it right. Now they want a long fair. Oui, c'est ça. There, all done. The owner, he tells me you did a good job. And so, as was our agreement, here is the picture you wish to see. Great, thank you. So, what else do you wish from me? Thank you for talking to me. D'accord.
S'il vous plaît, that's one less coin in my purse. Magdalene. This must be the place Zoo was talking about. And there's a skull. Did you take all those photos for me? You sound as if you didn't think I could do it. But I did. They're all right there in your camera. So you had some questions for me? What do you know about Noisette Tornade? The French resistance fighter? I seem to recall reading that she died recently and that's about it. Why do you ask? I know three things, Mr. Von Schwesterkronk. One, Noisette Tornade, whose obituary you were carrying until it fell out of your pocket in the park. Noisette used to own the old windmill Manette now owns. Two, during World War II, she was rumored to have hidden several valuable works of art from the Germans somewhere in Paris. And three, she was romantically involved with a German soldier named Hans. Hans von Schwesterkrank. Oh, yes. I know all those things, too. Hans was my great uncle. But there are one or two things you don't know, Fräulein. You could not have known that just before he passed away, my great uncle gave me that. What is it? Something Noisette gave to him. Turn it over and look on the back. Unfortunately, my great uncle couldn't remember what any of it meant. She used to be the director of public works, so I went to her favorite park to see if anything there might help me figure out what that card means. But I discovered nothing. You can keep that if you want. I can? Yes, I give up. I don't care anymore. Have you shown this to anyone else? No. I was too afraid Minette would hear about it. You see... Since Minette owns the Moulin, where Noisette spent most of her life, I thought dating her would help me figure out what that card meant. But then something totally unexpected and tragic happened. I fell in love with her. Minette is one of the cleverest, most infuriating, yet fascinating women I have ever met. You still feel that way? Even after she broke up with you like that? I can't help myself. I thought that if I found that missing artwork, I would be a hero and Minette would change her mind about me. But I can barely keep my mind on my works these days, let alone on finding some mystical treasure. If you want to look for it, go right ahead. Right now, the only thing I'm interested in recovering is Minette. What is it now? I'd better go. Adios.
Mr. von Schwesterkronk, could I ask you something? Sorry, too busy. What's up? Talk to you later. Whenever you have questions, just ask. What? There's something that I think you should know about Heather. Oh? What? One of those anonymous letters you got was from her. No, those letters aren't from Heather. One of them is... I thought that... This is all very confusing, as you can imagine. You're going to have to leave while I sort it all out. Just go. Go away, please. I wonder if the symbols on these discs have something to do with the dials on the M380 decoder that Noisette Tornade used. Forget something? Talk to you later. Okay.
Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. What did you say I had to do to get this thing? Get me a bottle of Mouton Fouette in 1968. I will accept nothing less. In the meantime, what else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Mademoiselle Drew, what is it now? I'd better get going. A tout à l'heure. How's it going? I just talked to this huge fan of yours. He'd really, really like your autograph. I'm flattered, but unfortunately he's out of luck. Nobody gets my autograph. I'm afraid that someone will use it to forge my name and steal my identity. Nobody can steal your identity. You're too famous. Stuff like that happens to people like me all the time. I'm just not going to take the chance. Want to play hangman? No, I don't think so. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. Guess I'll be running along. Okay. No, it's only me, Nancy Drew. Do what I ask, Nancy Drew. Then we will talk. the Paris studio of Hugo Bartoli, world-renowned fashion designer. As you might expect, I'm very busy right now creating my spring collection, about which I'm very excited. Regretfully, I'm far too busy to answer the phone, and as we all know, returning calls is such a bore. May I suggest you peruse my website, www.hugobartoli.mod, and use the link provided to contact me via email. In the meantime, my luscious fall line is in the stores, ready to be bought, worn, and enjoyed. Goodbye, then. Modern European history, Lynn Manrique. Hi, this is Nancy Drew again. I called you before? Yes, of course. What can I do for you? Do you know anything about the M380 decoder? It's a machine that the Resistance is said to have used to encode and decode their messages during the war. To decode a message, the dials on it had to be in the same position as they were when the message was encoded. The famous Enigma machine operated in much the same way. Do 
you think Noisette ever used the M380? I would stake my reputation on it. What is the Enigma machine? The Enigma machine is what the Germans used to encipher and decipher their secret messages during World War II. Allied codebreakers were finally able to figure out how the machine worked, and as a result, some say the war ended two years sooner than it would have otherwise. I really appreciate your help. My pleasure. Bye. Me again. We're both on, Nan. What's up? It turns out that Dieter has a secret or two up his sleeve, especially when it comes to the old windmill that Manette's studio is in. What do you mean? What kind of secrets? His great-uncle Hans was the wartime boyfriend of Noisette Tornad. That's the woman I told you about, the one who owned the Moulin, the windmill, before Manette did. Do you think this Hans guy was in on the theft of that artwork that's been missing all these years? If he was, maybe he told Dieter where it's hidden. His great-uncle gave him this weird card that has all these eyes on one side of it and the drawing of a room on the other. Unfortunately, the uncle couldn't remember what any of it meant. Consequently, neither does Dieter, so he gave it to me to figure out. Dieter says that he's so smitten with Manette that he doesn't care about finding the artwork anymore. Smitten with her? She's such a head case. That's what he said. Be careful, Nan. Just because he said it doesn't mean it's the truth. I'd better go. Bye-bye. Soyez prudent. Hey, Joe. Hey, Nancy. What's going on? That's it for now. Call back anytime. See ya. Forget something. Let's play hangman. Okay. You know the rules, right? Not really. It's real easy. All you do is try to guess what six-letter word I'm thinking of. You just say a letter, and if it's a letter in the word I'm thinking of, I'll write it down. If it's not in the word, I'll also draw part of the guy who's getting hanged. If I finish the stick figure before you guess the word, you lose. So, you ready? Ready. Z. U. M Y L Right you are! O Incorrect V E Right you are! J Nope! I. Right you are. N. Bingo. G. I wasn't even close. May I have that piece of paper? Sure. Want to play again? Maybe later. Anytime you want to play, just let me know. Guess I'll be running along. Okay.
Allô? Jing Jing? No, it's just me again. It's late. I can do this tomorrow. S'il vous plaît. This must be where I'm supposed to leave JJ's autograph. Heather? You told Minette about that letter and she fired me. So that's it. I'm history. Gone. Kaput. Got the big boot. All thanks to you, you think. I didn't mean for you to get fired. Yeah, well, what's done is done. And for your information, I was going to have you be one of the models in Minette's upcoming show. That's right. You were going to be a runway model in a Paris fashion show. But now, on the off chance that Minette has an upcoming show, it's extremely doubtful that whoever books the models will consider, even for a second, hiring some corn pone little blabbermouth from Podunkville, USA. So looks like you blew it, Nancy. For both of us. Allô? 
It's Nancy Drew. Did you get the autograph? It is magnifique! You were wise not to try to fool me, Nancy. I know Jing's handwriting better than I know my own. So, here is what I know about that symbol. I call it the hazelnut because to me that is what it looks like. A noisette. Wait a minute. A noisette? Yes, yes. This is French for hazelnut. I have seen it in only one place in the catacombs. To reach this place, return to the catacombs and go to the skull where you left Jing Jing's autograph. Lift the top part of the skull and push the red button. That will open a secret passage that will lead you to the noisette. Great, thank you. But if you go there, you must be careful. The tunnel police, they are one problem. The tunnels, they are another. What do you mean? Some of the tunnels, especially near the Mouton Beverage Company, they are water... water filled with trees. You mean waterlogged? Ah, yes, yes, waterlogged. You must swim underwater to reach the place where I saw the noisette. And the water is very cold. You will need a wetsuit. Good luck, Nancy Drew. You will need that too. What? Do you have any idea who sent you that box of cockroaches? No. Probably just some idiot who has no understanding of how much I have to do, and how long it takes me to do it, and thinks the world revolves around him and what he wants, and can't understand why people don't jump just because he snaps his finger! I mean, probably just some practical joker, that's all. I won't disturb you any longer. Good. Schwester Kronk, could I ask you something? Sorry, too busy. Bonjour. What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? I wouldn't mind painting another picture or two. Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? You bet. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Of course. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. A wetsuit. Not just any wetsuit. It used to belong to a friend of the famous undersea explorer Jacques Cousteau. A friend who is said to have shared many adventures with him. For that reason, I sell it for 125 euros. I couldn't possibly pay more than 63 euros. Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. I don't have five euros. I can't get in. What intrigues, mademoiselle, this time? Could I paint some more? Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. S'il vous plaît. ce coin-là. Quoi Oui, il y a un monstre vert, gigantesque, avec... Arrêtez Je vous arrête. That is one sweet ride. Au oh, plus d'anglais, Jean-Claude, ça m'énerve. Practice, it makes perfection. Dis ça. I'm totally done with that. Do Arrêtez. Vous allez avoir des problèmes maintenant. d'anglais, Jean-Claude, ça m'énerve. Practice, it makes perfection. Dis ça. I'm totally done with that, dude. It's time to put on the wetsuit. Hope it's more comfortable than it looks. Ooh, this place is crawling with four-legged vermin. Hope they leave my stuff alone. Okay, a rough translation would be, in Europe, near the new bridge, Snow White lives in a red castle. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I 
no idea what this is, but after everything I went through to get here, I'm taking it. Ichido is missing. Something must fit here. Entrez, s'il vous plaît.
Hey, my book on codes is missing. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Retens. And she returns with a bottle of Mouton Forte, 1968. Oh la la, you did it. So, I take this and give you this. Take it. You have earned it. Thanks. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, Mademoiselle. Au revoir. Looks like I should type a message using my own keyboard. The dials on this thing move.
Rouge blanc, rouge bleu, rouge. Looks like French to me.
Sue Loren, four one five four. That. Hey, what's going on? Shoot, that pesky squirrel must have jumped on the handle and moved the windmill. Stop that, you little pest! What intrigues Mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, Mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. I need to put something here to scare that squirrel away. I need to put something here to scare that squirrel away.
Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? How much are you asking for this steak? That is made of the finest wood, and it can be used for many, many things. It is one of my most popular items. For that reason, I sell for 13 euros. I'll give you 10 euros. Voila. Oh, forget my offer. I'm kind of short on cash. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? I'd like to paint some more, if that's okay. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? What did you say you'd sell this steak for? I sell for 13 euros. I'll give you 10 euros. Voila. What else do you like? Where'd you get the cowboy hat? That is the hat of a real cowboy from Texas. It is authentic and very well made, so I sell for 60 euros. I'd be willing to pay more like 30 euros. Voila. Oops, I'm gonna have to pass, running low on money. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? Do you still need someone to paint pictures for you? Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? If you don't mind. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? How much is this again? 60 euros. I'd be willing to pay more like 30 euros. Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. I need to put something here to scare that squirrel away. I need to put something here to scare that squirrel away. I think I'll take these with me. Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... What do you want for this doll's head? That is the head of a doll that used to belong to the best friend of the daughter, of the stepmother, of the sister, of the uncle, of the last president of France. But because the body is missing, I will let it go for six euro. Will you take five instead? Paying me anything less than six euro would be criminal. I'll take it. It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. I need to put something here to scare that squirrel away. I'll take these with me. Stop that, you little pest! Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? Do you still need someone to paint pictures for you? Be my guest.
Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? I'd love to, if that's okay. Be my guest. Monsieur, how's this? Another fine job. Here is your money. Do you wish to paint another? Not right now. Maybe later. Later, yes. Now you buy something. I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Welcome back. What do you like? Is this just regular string? That is very good string. Very strong. Very good to have around. You can buy for only six euros. Would you take five euros for it? Voila. What else do you like? Guess I'm just not in a buying mood. When you want to look again, just come back. I will. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bonjour. What intrigues mademoiselle this time? Well, let's see. Is this pie tin very expensive? Very cheap. 15 euro. Would you take 4 euros instead? Vendu. What else tickles the fancy? I really don't want to buy anything right now. Very well. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Black in there. I'm going to need a flashlight. No way am I going in there without a flashlight. No way am I going in there without a flashlight. Bon 
Bonjour, mademoiselle. What you need, I am sure to have. Well... I could use a flashlight. Mine was in my lost luggage. That is only ten oro. Batteries included. I'll take it. It is yours. What else appeals to you? Actually, I'm not interested in buying anything right now. Then you will just have to come back. I might just do that. Bye. Au revoir. Get out my flashlight. It's late. I can do this tomorrow.
Too late. What is that? Who's out there? It's just me, Nancy. Uh-oh. What did you say? Nothing. Everything's fine. You just stay in there and keep working. Looks like this thing is set to go off if she opens the door. I've got to figure out how to disarm this thing before she opens the door. What are you doing out there? Nothing. Just stay in there. Everything's fine. You're doing something. I can hear you. I'm tidying up. You just keep working. Look, you are really starting to bother me. I'm sorry. I'm almost done. Really. All right, stop it right now or I'm coming out there. No, no, don't come out. I'm just about done.
does it. Whatever you're doing, it's about to end. No, Manette, please stay there. Don't open the door. Oh, shoot. What is that? Who's out there? It's just me, Nancy. Uh-oh. What did you say? Nothing. Everything's fine. You just stay in there and keep working. Looks like this thing is set to go off if she opens the door. I've got to figure out how to disarm this thing before she opens the door. What are you doing out there? Nothing. Just stay in there. Everything's fine. You're doing something. I can hear you. I'm tidying up. You just keep working. I'm done. I won't bother you anymore, I promise. I better get rid of this thing before she sees it and really freaks. Wonder why this indentation is here.
How can I unlock this? How can I unlock this? So that's what Noisette stole during the war. Stained glass. If you are reading this, it means that I am dead and that you have discovered my secret. Yes, the rumors were correct. With the help of Hans von Schwesterkrank, I took the stained glass you see in front of you and hid it. Not for personal gain, but so these exquisite pieces of art would not be lost to the dangers of war. I was not a traitor, nor was Hans. He helped me because he knew it was the right thing to do. But why, you are asking, why when the war ended did I not return them? Why did I not even admit taking them? At first it was because I was angry. After all that I had done for my country, when my friendship with Hans was discovered, people turned against me and accused me of terrible things. I wanted to hurt the people of Paris the way they were hurting me, so I said nothing about the stained glass. Then, when at long last I was deemed innocent, my anger subsided, but fear took its place. I was afraid that if I revealed what I had done, the accusations would start up again, and people would once again call me a criminal and question my motives and assail my character, and it would have been too much to bear. Hans had gone back to Germany, and despite his promises to the contrary, I knew I would never see him again. Like everyone else, I just wanted to get on with what was left of my life, so again I said nothing. And gradually time passed, and Paris healed, and I healed. Yet the right time for telling the world my secret never seemed to come. And now I am director of public works, a job I hold not only because I love this city, but because I wanted to make sure that someone, you, would be able to eventually find what I hid. Please make sure these pieces make a safe return to the world above, when you see them as they were meant to be seen, with sunlight streaming through their panes, interrupting the darkness with color and meaning and joy. Only then will you truly understand why I did what I did a lifetime ago. N.T. X.I.V.I.I.I. Oh, the door locked behind me, and nobody knows I'm down here. Not good.
French again. French numbers. Well, does the dress work? It does indeed. Yeah, yeah! What about when I whispered? And when I turned my back? Could you hear what I said then? Gonzo, I could hear everything. With this dress, we will be able to hear every word that is spoken within 10 meters of the First Lady. And what we hear, what we sell, will make us the wealthiest spies on the planet. <laughs> hey! Hey! I made you the dress, so how about paying me? After the first lady takes possession, that is our deal. Look, I put up with the dead flowers, the letters, the paint, the idiotic phone calls. I put up with all your stupid threats for months. I deserve to get paid now. Those weren't threats. Those were incentives meant to keep you on track. And they obviously worked. You'll get your money when she gets the dress. Let's go, Gunther. But they're picking it up for her tomorrow. What difference does it make whether you pay me now or 24 hours from now? Oh my gosh! It sounds like Manette made that dress for the First Lady to be some kind of bugging device. I've got to get it out of here and take it to the police. Where did you come from? You've been hiding in here, eavesdropping. You heard everything, didn't you? Not everything, but enough to know that thanks to you, those two guys intend to use this dress to bug the World Summit. I knew there was something sneaky about you the minute you walked into my office. I should have tossed you out on the spot and told Amy Grunhild to stuff it. Well, newsflash, sister. I am about to knock your nosy little block off. Hey, yeah. I'm taking you out, Nancy, and I don't mean for sushi. Ow! He da! Ha! Sa! Ha! Sa! Kila! Ow! Ika! Ha! Sa! Hey! Esa! Esa! Esa, esa, ow. Ika. He died. Soon you'll be making friends with the floor. Shaza. Ho, 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 ho. Hey. Shaza. Ow. Stand the wrath of my fists of fury. 
Dracula! Ow! You got a mean right or left hook on you. Kila! Yikes! Essa! Essa! I'm going to finish you! Hita! Ow! Ha! One more punch and you're done for! Shaza! Ow! Essa! Essa! Ow! He died! This is what you get for sticking your big schnoz where it doesn't belong. <gasps> oh! I'm a wide belt in itchy dough, and after I'm done with you, you'll need an intern yourself. A medical one. Issa! Issa! Die! He died! <laughs> Ready, Nancy, because I'm about to beat you at your own game. Eat ka Killa Ha 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 Who are you, some kind of spy? Killa! Oh! Shaza! Oh! Ho, 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 ho! Ow! Ha! Sa! Jai! He die! Soon you'll be making friends with the floor. Issa! Issa! Oh! Shura! Oh, am I hurting you? Killa! Ow! You got a mean right or er, left hook on you. Ha! So! Eat! Ka! Ha! So! Ow! When I'm done with you, Amy Grunhild's next. Issa! Issa! Hey! Killa! Oh! Issa! Issa! Oh! You might as well just give up. He died! Ow! Ho, 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 ho! Oh! This is what you get for sticking your big schnoz where it doesn't belong. <gasps> oh! I'm a wide belt in itchy dough, and after I'm done with you, you'll need an intern yourself. A medical one. Ho, 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 ho! Oh! Ha! So! Oh! Ho, 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 ho! Issa! Issa! Hey! S-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-
Shazam! Shazam! You learn to block like that. I'm getting kind of tired, I think. Uh. Look at that. You've got a twin, and I used to think twins were so cute. Eat go! Kila! Ow! Issa! Issa ho! Issa! Issa ho! I fought imaginary elves that were stronger than you. Shazam! Ow! Eeka! <laughs> Kila! Yikes! You can't block my power force punches forever. S oh. Might as well give up, Minette. Shazza! <clears throat> Shazza! Ha! Eeka! Hita! <clears throat> I can't believe it. You never threw a single punch, yet you beat me. Life is so unfair. And so... horribly... unrude. Gosh. And there it was, the real reason why Minette wore that mask. A tattoo, which she later admitted she had gotten on the spur of the moment and which she instantly regretted, calling it the stupidest thing she'd ever done in her life. She also admitted that the reason she had fallen so far behind schedule was because Ernst and Gunther Schmeck, former members of the East German secret police, were paying her a small fortune to create a dress for the First Lady out of fabric they supplied. This fabric was infused with microscopic circuitry that would allow them to eavesdrop on the world summit. All three have been arrested, which means Manette will probably be designing her next collection from a jail cell. And she doesn't care for stripes. As for the beautiful pieces of stained glass that Noisette Tornade hid away years ago, they have been returned to the churches they came from. And Noisette is finally getting the respect and gratitude she was denied after the war. Not that she was perfect. But it seems to me her biggest fault wasn't doing too little for her beloved city of Paris, but trying to do too much. As for Heather, after Manette was arrested, Amy Grunhild asked her to try to salvage the spring show. So she finished Manette's designs, came up with a few of her own, got everything made, lined up the models, and put on a show that Jean-Michel is still raving about. Unfortunately, I wasn't invited.